Hello, welcome to the All or Not podcast. Our official sponsors are KR Couriers and Transport Limited. Hello everyone, we're all good. Big thank you to everyone who likes, shares, comments and subscribes to the All or Not podcast with Michelle Billy Moore. Look, I'm not a gangster. I'm not a gunslinger. I'm not an art case. You know, I've just... I'm just a crazy mixed up kid in a two-bit town that's, you know, had a tough life. Um, most of it is of my own doing. You know, I know what my pain is like. You know, I know how I feel. You know, I know how I react and how I operate. So when I listen to stories of people on YouTube who talk about, like, you know, um, that OG life, packing and fighting and blades and guns and I think I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of a gun right I've never I've never owned a gun and discharged it at anyone I don't think um, it makes you a better person or an harder person if you do but I've had guns put on my face the first time was by the police when I was 17 I had a warrant out for me arrest I was avoiding uh, the police Always they have slammed on, they've coughed me, threw me in the back of the car, started to twist me up, screaming at me. Who's doing all the, the robberies, who's selling drugs? I had no idea, I'm just a street user. No one's telling me nothing. They weren't having it, they took me to Newsham Park, got out the car, took someone out the boot, come back, it was a towel, the young girl a towel, it was a big dirty gun in it. I don't know what make it was, it was a revolver, I know that. They told me to open my mouth. I'm thinking, what the fuck's going on here? Open your mouth. And I forced this gun in my mouth. They go, bang, bang! Right, we can kill you, we can end you here right now. I don't want to give a fuck about you, you junkie piece of shit. And they were probably right. No one would give a fuck about me. Not back then, anyway. You know, my mum, obviously, and that had missed me. But I was just, um, I was just destroying, you know, myself anyway. And all that was going on in my mind while they were doing this was... I hope you don't like blow through and check to see if I've got a warrant because I'll be fucking nicked and I don't want to land in Italy. You know, when he did as well, the eyelashes blew through, warrants. You know, got no information out of me, just dropped me off at Tuberup Police Station. And that was it. You know, resented them for fucking ever for that. The second time was when I was in Thailand. You know, I was on a little face bomb with them bikes that you're out while you're over there. This Thai kid slams on in his car. I bet his bumper, I'm fuming, it's his fault. Jumped off the bike, went to his window, started banging at him, like you can tell. He must have fucking shit himself, just seeing me, just like screaming at him. And he's got this gun from under his seat. Put it to the window, I could see he was in fear, and I thought, you know, why? You know, make one wrong move, he's gonna pull that and he'll have every right, so I'll just. Live to fight another day and get off. Just fucking spat me dummy and got off. The third time I had this uh, guy who was having it with Pinong, a Thai boxer, and he owed me a bit of money for Yabba. You know, he wasn't paying me. You know, that's just how it was. I fucking couldn't get anything out of anyone. Went round looking for him at this boxing event, and his brother lived in this room just at the end of this event. Looked at the door, walked through. He's kicked off his brother because he's not even there, this Pinong. He's pulled out a gun and started waving at me and thinking, oh, for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? So that was like the, the third time it's happened. The fourth time was when I was uh, fighting with a security guard. You know, in this building in Thailand, Chiang Mai again. You know, started wrestling into the floor. I've got off. He started to chase me, pulled out this gun and started discharging this firearm at me. Bullets are whizzing past my head. You know, I'm just thinking of getting away. The last time I had a firearm pulled on me was on Breck Road. I was rattling. I was sitting in my car with these samurai swords. I seen these kids who have got something about them selling bits. Looked at these samurai swords and thought, okay. These might buy these of me. <laughs> so I've jumped out the fucking car like the Islander. Right, it's like a fucking Viking stomper. Fucking running over towards them. They've been, what the 
fuck's going on here? Pulls out there's peace. He didn't point it at me. Went, Whoa, slow down there, you. I said, are you didn't have the knees off me? He went, nah, you're all right, you know, lad. You know, we don't use them. We've got these. No carrying glocks. But yeah, the fucking situations I find myself in. You know, and I'm no gangster. You know. But I never once feared that gun. Or the man behind it. Kind of had enough awareness or enough knowing that, you know, them bullets weren't, weren't, you know, weren't for me. So yeah, just a little upload again on my lifestyles. Because I know my audience is very diverse and I know that they, they go through their own consequences, their own demons and they've, they've had their own hardships and you can identify with these little uploads, you know. We're not big men, we're not hard men, you know. To be to be fair, we're quite fragile human beings, we're quite vulnerable. You know, if you admit that you've got a feeling and you can own it, you know, you can heal from it, and that's what I've had to do. So yeah. The life the lifestyle of an addict. If you're out there on the streets, just remember those people out there on the streets don't love you. Go home. Go to the people that miss you and care about you. They're the ones that are waiting for you. Once again, thanks for listening. Take care.